It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Wake Tech's assistant basketball coach, Jawal Baker. How are you doing today? Brandon, what's up, man? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you got started coaching in basketball? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I got started coaching in basketball um, probably around 2011. Um, a guy that mentored and coached me, he had his own program. So he gave me and some friends of mine an opportunity. Uh, we started out coaching AAU um, at a, with the ninth grade team. Um, so it was like a combination of that. And then I, I started coaching, volunteering at uh, Boys and Girls Club. Um, where I grew up, at, grew up, I coached like a little 10 to 12 age group team um, that first year, and then it kind of just went on from there. Can you talk about how you got started at Wake Tech? Yeah, definitely. So um, I got started, actually, the coach that was there before my current head coach, um, he was leaving out. I was going over there just um, sniffing around, you know, trying to, trying to get to know that coach and see if he had an opening or opportunity on the staff. Um, he ended up leaving um, and moving to Florida, um, and then Coach Wainwright got the job. So I was kind of already over there sniffing around and uh, just started talking with Coach Wainwright a little bit. Um, and it was his first year. He was putting together a staff. Um, I didn't actually start that year, but the next year I took another position. And then the next year I came on with Coach Wainwright, um, and that's how I got started at Wake Tech. What have you accomplished so far at Wake Tech? Uh, not enough. We uh, we've we've done well. We've we've had some success. Um, we did well the the first year I was there. We went to the NJCAA national championship tournament for Division Two. Uh, one of sixteen teams to do so. Uh, we won our region tournament, the Region Ten, um, and we did well. We probably won uh, anywhere from seventeen to twenty games that year. And then last year we finished second in our league, runner up. Um, in the regular season, and then we lost in the second round of the conference tournament. And I think we won 17 or 18 games last year. So we've done well, um, but our goal is to win a championship or compete for a championship every year, not only in our league, but nationally. So uh, we got some work to do. Can you talk about your time being the director of North Carolina Red Storm? Yeah, most definitely. Um, that was a good time. Um, my friends and I, we started um, actually – one of my friends, he played for North Carolina Red Storm underneath his, his dad's coaching um, when we were teenagers. So then we just kind of brought it back. Um, and, you know, my time directing the uh, program there, it was fun. Um, it was a learning experience more than anything, though. It taught me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about um, the travel ball, you know, the grassroots world and things. It taught me a lot about people um, and, and coaching. So it was a great experience, man. Uh, we, we had a good run. Uh, like I said, I learned a lot about myself. Um, I, did, I learned some things going forward that I'll take with me um, in leadership. I learned some things that I won't take with me in, in leadership. So, um, you know, I learned a lot by trial and error directing that program. Can you talk about your time at Rick Bluefield College as an assistant coach? Yeah, so I didn't. I haven't actually been on the staff there. What I do at Bluefield is um, those guys, Coach Richard Morgan, who's the head coach, Coach Ryan Moody, the assistant coach there, uh, really close with those guys, man, two great guys. They run a great program. Um, it's an NAIA program. So what they do is they bring me in um, twice a year, and I do I lead the skill development for the uh, men's elite camp. So I just come in. Um, I run them through drills and things like that. I kind of help uh, Coach, coach uh, Moody with directing and leading the camp. Um, and I do that a couple times a year, too. They got a beautiful campus up there. If you if you get a chance, man, check out a game, uh, Bluefield College. That's a, that's a great program. Can you talk about your time at the God, the God Christian Academy? Word of God. Yeah, Word yes. of God Christian Academy. Um, I was an assistant there um, and helped out under Coach Brian Clifton. He took over, um, I want to say 2015. He was there for like, like about three seasons or so. Um, so I helped out there. I helped with the JV. Um, I helped some with the varsity, his, his national varsity team. It was a good time as well because, um, you know, Word of God is a, is a basketball powerhouse. Um, they're known for having a lot of talented players and talented teams. It was good when I was there. Um, I think the first year I was there, they had like Raleigh Hawkins, 
um, Jalen Harris. They had um, Blake Harris. They had Brandon Huffman. So it, it gave me a chance um, to be around and just kind of see how, you know, those um, high-level high school dudes, you know, how they operate, how they work to build some relationships with other coaches and um, get an experience of what it's like to be at a national um, high school level program. So it was a good experience there. I, I enjoyed my time at, at Word of God. What is the recruitment process like at Wake Tech? Uh, similar, similar to anywhere else almost um, in terms of junior college and college. What we do is um, we identify, you know, talent like anybody else from going and watching high school games and travel ball games, um, exposure camps and stuff like that. We get emails, um, people reach out to us and send in questionnaires, just like anywhere else, uh, video and film. So once we identify kind of some guys that we feel like from a playing standpoint will fit what we do, uh, what we're looking to do, then we just try to build and get to know the kids, get to know their family, uh, you know, look into their, their character and academics. Um, then we try to get them on campus. And then from there, you know, if it's a mutual interest and it's a good fit, then we start moving forward in the recruiting process in terms of, um, you know, signing or getting commitments and things like that. Can you talk about the official visit atmosphere and what that's like? Yeah, so we, we do unofficial visits just because, you know, um, JUCO, you know, we, we can't pay for anything um, at our school in terms of a visit. So unofficial visits are uh, kind of all we have, but it's good. So what we do, what we do is um, we'll invite you out to campus. Uh, I like to try to do it on game day. So they can come in and kids and families can get a sense for how we play, our style of play. Um, we let them, you know, spend some time with the players, talk to the current guys, uh, talk about what their experience is like at Wake Tech, uh, meet the coaching staff and some other school and athletic personnel. Um, and, and, and then um, we let them tour the facilities, show them what we have to offer, um, not only from an athletic but an academic standpoint. And then go from there, you know, we just kind of like fellowship, you know, get to know, spend that time getting to know um, these kids and their family and letting them see um, the beautiful campus that is Wake Tech. Can you talk about game day against your rivals like Mount Olive and what and um, other schools like Pitt and stuff? Yeah, so uh, um, we're in the Region 10, um, and some of our some of the schools we play are like Lewisburg, uh, Pitt Community College, Davidson. Um, so it's, game day is is uh, our league is our league is tough. Our league is good. Um, everybody's good. Everybody has players. There's good coaches all through the league. Um, so game day, man, it, it requires some focus because you know you're traveling. You're on a van. You know the grind of JUCO. You know it's kind of similar to travel ball in a sense. Like you're on a van. You know, you stop and eat, you know, you might be on a three or four hour ride, you know, in a van, you got these big guys. So um, you got to, you got to really be focused and, and locked in. Um, once we get to the gym, you know, we'll, we'll get warmed up, we'll get loose, we'll get changed, we'll go through our pregame stuff um, and just try to get our mind right and get focused and get, get ready to play. Um, but game days are fun, you know, it's a chance to compete, you know, games are the fun part. So um, it, it, it's a good experience, it's fun. Can you talk about the difference between JUCO and a D1 to a D2 school? There's a, there's a lot <laughs> um, of differences, but I'll just probably try to um, maybe highlight a few. One is one is probably like budget, you know, money um, in terms of like scholarships and, and different um, things that Division One and Division Twos can pay for. Um, I know like here we, we don't necessarily have like a dormitory on campus. So um, that's one thing that's different for us. Um, and then just resources, you know, I think probably Division ones and Division twos have access to some more things that we don't necessarily have in our program or, you know, any other JUCO program um, here locally. So um, I would just probably say like resources um, and then, you know, dorms, obviously. What have you accomplished at Wake Tech so far, Eric? Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, we've been in nationals. Um, and we finished second last year. So we, we've won a lot of games since I've been there. I can say we've accomplished that. We've, we've also been uh, fortunate enough to be able to have some guys go on to the next level from our program um, and move on to four-year colleges on scholarships and, and um, academic and athletic. So uh, we've had some success with there. We've accomplished that. Um, that's something that we take pride in, you know, being able to uh, be like a platform or stepping stone to help guys go on to the four-year level. 
um, and move on from from junior college. Um, individually, you know, myself as a coach, um, I've recently been promoted to the associate head coach at Wake Tech. So that's something that, that I feel like I've accomplished there. Um, but it's a lot more things that I want to do. And I know um, Coach Wainwright, we want to do as a program. What do you look forward to accomplishing as the associate head coach at Wake Tech this coming up year? Winning, winning our region, winning Region 10, um, going on to nationals to the national championship tournament, competing for a national championship, not just getting there, and then, you know, helping as many guys move on to four-year colleges as possible. What advice would you give upcoming high school athletes looking to get recruited to the next level? I would say just be recruitable. Um, the thing that some um, high school athletes don't look at at times, like you may not be interested in a certain level. Like I get guys that tell me all the time they're not interested in junior college, which is fine, um, but you still want to be recruitable. You want to treat every coach the same regardless of level. Um, you still want to keep be open-minded because, um, you know, here I am today, I'm at a junior college. Next year, I might be at a D1, I might be at a D2 or D3. Um, I think you want to treat every coach the same regardless of level and, and don't close the door on any um, opportunities uh, that may be out there for you without really looking into it because you don't know, um, you know, where you're going to end up going at the end of the day. So I would just say be recruitable, um, you know, respect yourself, man. You know, your social media, that social media is big too. Watch what you're putting out there. Um, I can assure you coaches are looking at that stuff even down, you know, with us at junior college. Like I look at social media. I know my head coach does as well. So I would just say be, be recruitable. What advice would you give upcoming athletes that are looking to get into the JUCO that doesn't think that they're going to be able to make it at a D1? Um, I would probably say, you know, the same. And, like, not only be recruitable, but I would just say, um, you know, take it serious. Like, JUCO has a – JUCO has a stigma for some reason. Um, you know, sometimes, man, people look down on it. But um, even now, if you're paying attention to what's going on with recruiting and, and uh, you know, kids going to this G League, kids leaving early and all the different, you know, avenues that are out there. I mean, high, high school kids, especially with the NCAA recruiting calendar having changed and in COVID, high school kids are having less opportunities. I mean, colleges are recruiting JUCO. Uh, I feel like they always have, but I feel like now more than, more than ever. So... Um, if you you know you don't think you can get to a D1, be open to JUCO um, or D2, D3, be open to JUCO because it's still an opportunity. Um, it's a platform. You know, it can be that next step that gets you um, where you want to go if it's a D1 or D2 or whatever. Um, I would just say take it serious, man, because it's, it's, it's good basketball. What advice would you give upcoming college coaches looking to get into the profession? Um, start early. Start early. Uh, that's something I wish I would have did. I wish I would have started earlier. Um, a lot of times, man, with coaching um, and really any job, you got to take uh, or be willing to or in position to take like, you know, take the stairs, take stepping stones or entry level positions to be able to get where you're trying to go. Um, and those things don't always pay, you know, a lot or pay enough for you to be able to live. And just build your network up because that's what's going to be that's what's going to carry you um, you know throughout the industry is um your network where can my listeners find you at on social media um social media you can find me on twitter um i think it's i underscore do underscore it underscore um for the number four y'all y-a-l-l um that's on twitter and then on instagram um coach j J-A-Y, and then W-T-C-C, Coach J, Wake Tech Community College. Thank you again for your interview, and best of luck to you in your future at Wake Tech. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Joao, for your interview, and best of luck. 
Brandon, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.